Hi, my name's Kane Ramsey, and here's some food for thought. Are you an addict? How many addicts do you know? Do you like addicts? Do addicts serve the society in which you live? Or do they detract and take away from it? Are addicts a plus in society or are they a minus? Do they addeth or do they taketh away? There's a pretty good chance if you're thinking about this word addict right now, you've most likely got a picture inside of your mind's eye of a young guy or a young girl or an old man sitting on a park bench with a cheap bottle of um, super strength cider, drinking away dirty, smelly drugs, holes in their arms, all that sort of thing. Um, that's quite stereotypical, isn't it? Have, how about if we were to consider addiction from a slightly different perspective? How about if we were to consider this idea of addiction from the young man who's absolutely addicted to his job, to climbing the corporate ladder? How about that guy, you know, who loves the money? What about the Joneses across the street who just like to be known for being bigger and better than everyone else. The bigger car, the faster car, the bigger house. You know, going back quite a number of years ago, I was living in New Zealand in a place called Queenstown, one of the most beautiful places I'd ever lived. And I can remember having a conversation. I'd been asked to a friend's house for a barbecue, and the street in which they lived was absolutely breathtaking. Scenic views overlooking Lake Wakatipu and uh, absolutely beautiful scenery. And I remember having a conversation with, uh, with a couple who lived in the street. Now, they just had some new neighbours move into the house at the top of the street in which they lived, which was a bigger house than the one that they lived in. And they said to me, you know, the, the neighbours, they're, they're really rich. And, uh, and at the time, I was living in a shared flat where I was renting. I wasn't on a particularly well-paid job because I wasn't a resident in New Zealand. I was just across there on a work, on a work permit, on a work visa. And I can remember thinking to myself, my goodness, um, I was looking at these people living in this beautiful house with a big carport and pool, spa in the back garden, huge barbecue area. I was looking at them as being rich whilst they were looking to the people who lived at the top of the cul-de-sac as being rich because they had an even bigger house and an even bigger car. And I guess that this word rich is kind of determined in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Because I guess that more often than not in life, we generally compare ourselves in terms of rich people to those that have more than us, don't we? But what would happen if we were to shift our perspective and begin comparing ourselves to those that have less than us? This might give us a better or perhaps a slightly different understanding of what it means to actually be rich. It might even give us a greater appreciation for life. Who knows? Because many people in life who don't have this appreciation of what it actually means to be alive, of what it means to be rich, generally become addicted to something. And I'm not just talking about drugs or alcohol here. I'm talking to all those young guys and all those young girls and all those middle-aged men and all those business people and all those budding entrepreneurs who enough is never enough for. Now, I live in Dunfermline in Scotland, which is a nice little city. And around about 40 miles north of where we live, there's a guy who lives in a castle who calls himself the $50 billion man. Now, the guy's obviously worked quite hard for his money um, and he lives in a castle. In fact, I do believe he's got quite a few around the world. But the question that I ask is, when will enough ever be enough? Because addiction isn't about drink or isn't about drugs. Um, I remember having a conversation a few years back with a young guy who did struggle with drink and drugs. And what surprised me as I entered into conversation with him was the fact that he wasn't addicted to the drink or the drugs within themselves. What he was addicted to was the feelings that those chemicals 
brought about inside of him because the rest of the time he felt like his life was going nowhere, like he was just stuck in a rut, going around in circles. And if you think about addiction in this context, it kind of helps us make better sense and better appreciate why it is that people do the things that they do in life. If you see that guy pursuing the career, the work dream, the first million, the second million, the bigger house, the bigger car, many people in life look for things on the outside of themselves to fulfill these needs that we have on the inside of ourselves. And if you think about it, well, how sustainable actually is this? You see, what I'm going to suggest today, the food for thought I want to offer you is, I'm going to ask you what it is that you're addicted to in life. And I'm not talking about drink or drugs or caffeine or those sorts of things. I'm talking about seriously, what is it that you have committed your life to? Because one thing that I will guarantee you right now, that if there's something that you really feel that you need in life, in order to get ahead, in order to be significant, or um, to find this security, or, or whatever it is, then my friend, I guarantee that you are not free. Many people in life, I've had conversations with people over the years, multi-millionaires who've said, you know, when I just have this much money in the bank, I'll be free to do whatever I want. And what they're saying is that when they have so much money in the bank, they're gonna be free to choose differently. My friend, what I'm gonna urge you to consider for the rest of today is this. If there's a decision or a lifestyle choice, or a habit, or a career, or a pursuit that you're currently pursuing in some area of your life right now, here today, that you're not 100% fully passionate about. What's stopping you today, really, practically, from choosing something different? That's all for now, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.